Hey everyone, this is Derek, and in this video we're going to look at average rate of change, and this time it's going to be an in-function notation rather than uh, sort of the more algebraic looking slope version. Um, so it's the same idea. It's still a change in y over a change in x or a change in the dependent quantity over the change in the independent quantity. Um, the, they are the exact same formula. Um, it's just, it's written a little bit different. So to kind of tie that in with, with what we did um, in the last section with slope, um, if I have this point x1, y1, and x2, y2, um, these two points right here, I can do my change in y and my change in x, and then that gets me slope of a line. So if I write these in function notation instead of x1, y1, x2, y2, it would look like this. So if I'm putting in an x1, instead of getting out a y1, now I'm going to get out an f of x1. And here, if I'm putting in an x2, Again, instead of getting out of y2, now I'm going to call that f of y2. I'm sorry, x2. Pretend like that's an x. That's a bad x. Okay. Um, and so what I get is f of x2 minus f of x1 right there over x2 minus x1. Um, and so this is the ex it's the exact same formula as this. It's just it's in function notation instead of um, just written as ordered pair. So, and then the other thing on that is, so the average rate of change. When we have a curved function like this, you know, the average rate of change for linear function is just the slope. But when we have a curved function, the average rate of change is actually changing, well, the rate of change is changing at every single point. So if we were talking about the average rate of change, we're picking two points and saying, on average, how did it change between there? And what that is is called um, the secant line. So this blue line that it shows here, um, between these two points is called the secant line of these points and its slope is the equivalent of the average rate of change and that's going to be important because um, if, when we get to calculus we're going to let um, these points get closer together and this is going to turn into a derivative and an instantaneous rate of change so this average rate of change is kind of the last stop in algebra um, before heading into um, calculus uh, basically the, the definition of a derivative Okay, so let's see what that looks like, um, both kind of graphically and more analytically. Uh, so for this question, uh, mark the two points on the graph that are needed to calculate the average rate of change over the interval uh, negative 4 to negative 1. So this is an interval. This isn't an ordered pair. These are both x values. This is your from x, the first x is negative 4, and then the second x is negative 1. So from here to here is where we're calculating the average rate of change. So we would be going from this point down to this point. Um, so those are the two points that we would need to, to find the average rate of change between. Um, next up, we're supposed to connect the points with a line segment. Um, on, a, on the homework, you're clicking on a graph and it'll totally let you do this. I'm going to try to draw a straight line, but it'll be questionable. Okay, so something like that. Um, and now I'm supposed to find the average rate of change. So, I mean, I can do that a couple of ways. Um, if I just, if I look at the points, so when I put in negative four, that came out, um, looks like four on the graph. And then when I put in negative one, that came out one. So doing what we just did, I can say, so slope is one minus four over negative one minus a negative four. And that would be negative 3. That would change up to an addition. So negative 1 plus 4 would be 3. Makes negative 1. So that would be the hard way to do it. Or I could just look over here at the picture and go, okay, so what's my change in y? So my change in y, I'm going in the negative direction, right? So my change in y is negative 3 right there. And what's my change in x? Um, I, for me, I always work to the right. And so that's positive direction, so that would be positive 3. So if I think of change in y over change in x, I get change, um, sorry, negative 3 over 3. And then it's the exact same negative 1 as I got up here. Uh, so that's the easier way. But there it is, just showing it with the points, and that's consistent. Um, so this next one, we were supposed to find the average rate of change uh, for this function on that interval. Um, we don't have a picture to work off of this time, and so this is where we're going to use that definition uh, from the last page. I'll just jot it down right here. 
Um, so it was that f of x2 minus f of x1 over x2 minus x1, and that's our average rate of change. Um, so I'll go ahead and do that right here. So this is going to be my x1 and my x2, and then I'm just going to put them in this, this equation and, and calculate these things. So f of x2, that's telling me I'm going to find f of 3. And let me write it out this way first. And I'm going to subtract from that f of x sub 1, which is negative 2. So f of negative 2. And then that's going to be over x2 minus x1. So that's 3 and then minus negative 2. So now I have to actually figure out what f of 3 is. And remember, what, this just means I'm plugging in a 3 and then I'm figuring out what the y value is that would go with that. So it's the same as getting these ordered pairs. It's just now I only know the x. I'm having to plug into the equation to get that y that goes with it. So f of 3, I'll just go ahead and write that out right down here. So that's going to be 3 times 3 squared plus 4. Oops. And then minus uh, f of negative 2. So that's going to be 3 negative 2 squared plus 4. And then that's all over 3 minus negative 2, which would be 5. Um, there, that would be 3 squared would be 9 times 3 is 27. And then 4 would make 31. And that's going to be uh, 4 times 3 is 12 plus 4 is 16. And that's a minus over 5. And so that is 15 over 5. So my average rate of change is 3.